So the, the Heap World Map Europe 3 project was actually part of the Stratego project. And one of the first things we did, which we hadn't done before, was we moved from the European level to the national level. So this was the first time that we looked at a long-term heating and cooling strategy, not just for the whole of Europe as one country, but going down into the individual member states. And we trialled our methodology out on five different countries. The Czech Republic, Croatia, Italy, Romania and the United Kingdom. And this was the first time not only that we did it at a country level, but that we actually included the cooling sector in great detail as well as the heating sector in the Heat Roadmap Europe series. And one of the most interesting things we found was that the cooling demand today is actually much smaller than the heating demand even in countries that we would consider relatively warm. So for example, Italy as an, had a cooling demand which was around 10 or 15 percent of its heat demand. So even in a southern European country like Italy, heating is a much more significant energy consumer than cooling is today. That means that in the short term at least, the emphasis should be on decarbonizing the heating sector, but of course in the long run the cooling demand may increase as people start to use more cooling on a day-to-day -day basis. Then looking at the heat sector itself, we found the same key messages in Heat Roadmap Europe 3 as we did in the previous two studies. And that was once again that heat savings are a really good idea, they're very cost effective and they save a lot of energy in all of the five countries that we analysed and they should be implemented in buildings both in the cities and in the rural areas. However, there's also a huge potential for energy efficiency on the supply side of the heating sector. We recommend that district heating should be increased in all five countries in the cities, while heat pumps are the best balance between sustainability and uh, costs for outside the city areas in the countryside. But one of the most surprising findings for us in Heat Roadmap Europe 3 was the fact that the district heating penetration rates that we recommended were much higher in the countries that don't have district heating today than it was for the countries that do have district heating today. So for example the Czech Republic and Romania have about 20 to 25 percent district heating today and they were expanding it to around 40 percent. In comparison Italy and the UK which have almost no district heating today were expanding the level to 60 and even 70 percent. So there's a huge potential in some of these countries that hasn't been tapped into yet and a huge potential to grow district heating in these countries that haven't used it before. Outside of the city areas, as I mentioned, the heat pumps proved to be a very good balance between using sustainable resources and costs. And of course, there was some places where biomass boilers may be useful also, depending on the re local resources that are available. But primarily, uh, electric-based heat pumps seem like the, the best solution in the rural areas. And this is something we hope to improve upon in Heat Roadmap Europe 4. The final thing that we developed in Heat Roadmap Europe 3 was the synergy between the heating sector and the electricity sector. We calculated in our models how changing the heat sector can help us to cost effectively integrate more wind and solar in the electricity sector. And the reason that it can be done so cost effectively is due to the introduction of very cheap thermal storage. We've identified that thermal storage is around 100 times cheaper than electricity storage. So by introducing district heating in the cities, which can use large thermal storage tanks, by introducing heat pumps in the countryside, which can store wind power in the local individual storage tanks, you're creating a lot of cheap flexibility within the energy system. And by quantifying this for each of the five countries, we've been able to illustrate how not only will these changes help the heating sector, but they'll actually facilitate a decarbonization of the electricity sector also.